Today, I want to talk about making design decisions with mobile in mind. And what I mean by that is there's so many different ways to accomplish the same layout that ultimately the one that you choose should be the best option for both desktop and mobile. And the decisions that you make are going to be influenced by ultimately what your design looks like on mobile. So today I'm going to be talking about overlapping blocks. And I love this effect where you have like an image over here and then a solid color and then you have, you know, an image overlapping the two. And this layout is pretty straightforward. It makes sense that this would be an image block that's full width and full height. And then this would just be your normal section background color and you only make the image this big and then you can overlay the image on top. So that makes sense. But let's look at another version of this. If I scroll down the page, we also have this option where instead of having an image, we can just have, you know, a color kind of end and then we have an image overlapping that color. Now I do the same thing on the readings page. So let's take a look at that. And uh, I have these images here and we have this solid block of color and then we have this blank space over here. So how do you decide how to do this effect? Because there's two different ways that you can do it. I could have uh, this be the shape, the white color. Um, so this is a shape block and the background color is tan. But then there's the inverse way. If I duplicate this section, I can make the background of the section white and I can make the shape block the tan color. So let me just stretch out the shape block. I'll make it tan. And then I can make the section white. So we have two different ways of getting to the exact same result. So ultimately, like, how do you choose? How do you decide which one to use? So that's what I mean by having mobile in mind, because these two results are, are going to be completely different in terms of the options that we can do on mobile. So here I've decided to go with a tan background for the section. And then I just have this kind of like white, you know, rectangle behind the image. Um, another option would be to kind of like spread this across the page and now we just have this like full bleed kind of stripe with the white shape block. You know, maybe I could also just kind of block out the whole top section and then it might be cool if the image is kind of like overlaying vertically like that. That's kind of a, a nice effect. But ultimately the section is tan and then I can decide to make creative decisions with the little white section. The inverse way, remember the, the result was the same on desktop, but this is a pretty nice look here where the whole section is white and then we have this little tan block. But the only thing about that is my next section is white too and I wanted a little bit more differentiation. So that's why I ultimately went with the tan background and then because the following section was white and that way I could just separate them as opposed to when you know things are white and there's a lot of text, it starts to feel like one constant scroll. And so it's nice to break things up a little bit, changing background colors. So um, that's an example of designing with mobile in mind. You know, ultimately, what do I want my mobile view to look like? Because there are two exact same ways that you can accomplish that same effect. So uh, going back to the first section on the home page, let's talk about some of these little decorative designs. So. I've uploaded all these little stars as their own image blocks. And the reason that I did that is because, you know, I could have just made these part of the background image and uploaded a background image here. But the problem with that is I don't have as much flexibility on mobile. Like that star in the corner probably would have cropped off the page. You know, these stars would have probably cropped off of mobile view as well. So it just makes sense to make them actual image blocks because in Fluid Engine we can rearrange those blocks wherever we want them in the section. So I definitely recommend taking advantage of the ability to move around blocks independently from mobile view and desktop view in Fluid Engine. And for those little design decorations, sometimes it makes sense just to upload them as their own image block because you get more flexibility on mobile. Now finally, I'm going to look at this image arrangement over here. So I've made the creative decision to have this foreground element be an image block, and then I have the design decoration in its own image block as well. And the reason that I did that is again because of how I want it to display on mobile. 
So if I go down to mobile, you can see that the aspect ratio of this image has completely changed. So now it's much wider and squatter, I guess you could say, and it just kind of suits this mobile environment better. Now the alternative way that this could have been done, and before Fluid Engine it would have had to been done this way, if I duplicate the section, I can get rid of this background decoration. The alternative way is to upload an image where the decoration is part of the image. So I have this other version of the picture here, and it's you can see the, the arch is kind of baked into the image, and then we have that background element baked into the image as well. And if I set it to fit and then get rid of my corner radius. So you can see um, like the effect on desktop is pretty much the same, but the only problem is we don't have the same level of flexibility on mobile. So you can see that this image is, it's much taller and narrower and it just, it helps when we can set the image to fill so that it fills the frame. And then what I did is I made the arch by going to the corner radius and giving a 500 and 500 to the top of the image. Like this is a normal rectangular image set to fill that now appears like an arch that we can totally like rearrange the size of on mobile. We have total flexibility. Here we don't have flexibility. So like this feels really small in this whole section. And the only way to make it bigger is to make it taller because as it gets taller, it gets wider. But now we have this like humongous image and like this section would have to be huge just to accommodate the needs of this one image. So in this layout, it makes sense for this image just to be squatter and a little bit wider. If we baked in the arch to the image, we lose that flexibility of being able to resize it on mobile. So that's an awesome method that we can use now with Fluid Engine is the corner radius. So if you ever want to do arches, I recommend setting the image to fill using the corner radius to um, make that arch design. Much more flexibility on both desktop and mobile. And also the, uh, the last benefit is that she could just replace this image because it's just a normal rectangular image um, and it would still maintain its arch. Whereas here, because the background design and the arch are both baked into the photo, she would have to go into Photoshop or Canva or something and completely redo this design and then upload it. So it's much less you know, feasible for the client to upload images this way as opposed to this way. The takeaway for this video is just to be mindful of mobile and the bigger picture as you're building out your designs on desktop. If you enjoyed this video, I have a Fluid Engine Masterclass coming out soon where I'm going to be teaching Fluid Engine, but also higher level concepts and design techniques like this to help you build more complex designs in Fluid Engine with less custom CSS. So if you're interested in getting notified when that's released, you can sign up using the link in the description below this video. All right, that's it for today. Please consider subscribing to the channel for more Squarespace content like this, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.